Hey guys, welcome to today's video, which is all about our wedding. So I was gonna have like stuff here to show you, but actually I'm very unwell <laughs> and uh, everything's like packed away from the wedding, but I realized I have like photos and videos of everything. So what I'm gonna do is like overlay clips of everything I'm talking about so you can see what I'm talking about um, whilst I'm chatting to you guys about our wedding. So if you're new here, hi, welcome, please do subscribe. I would love to have you. Um, our little story, a brief overview. Uh, we've been together since we were 14, so now we've been together 17 years. So we've been together longer than we've been apart in our whole lives, which is wild every time I say that out loud. Um, we got engaged in late 2019 and we got straight to planning our wedding because we didn't want a long engagement. We've been together a long time, we wanted to plan our wedding straight away. So we got to planning and we got to booking things and then the pandemic hit. Yeah, actually, as I was um, just chatting there, uh, my stationery lady <laughs> tagged me on Instagram in a post about our wedding, so that's weird. Um, yeah, anyway, we got engaged, we planned our wedding, we booked things, and then the pandemic hit. And we had like a, a lot of long talks, like I'm sure every couple did that was meant to get married at that time, um, about what to do about that, really. And we knew lots of people that were moving it sort of only a few months out or six months out or even a year out um and this was obviously be at the very start of 2020 but we just decided that seemed too risky to us we were like we just thought that the pandemic was going to last a lot longer than the three month lockdown basically and so we moved it all the way to this year 2022 two years out but we decided because we've been together so long and we didn't want to wait and we didn't want to sort of feel like our, we were putting our lives on hold we decided to keep our original wedding date and get married on that date um we could only have a tiny little service um at the church with 15 guests like 15 of us in total um there was no dancing singing allowed no reception of any kind no eating and drinking no anything um and yeah we we did it and honestly it was the most perfect day like it it was a dream and i have not regretted doing it that way for a single second so and and neither has been and all of our guests say it was just the most perfect lovely happy day and it really was um but we just also didn't after being together so long and talking about our wedding since we were literally kids we didn't want to miss out on having our full wedding that we'd always imagined because we we ha have been that couple that planned everything talked about everything we knew exactly what we wanted even from like hen do's and stag do's um my dream since i was a kid was like the night before to be in a lovely bridal suite with my bridesmaids like just getting all excited getting ready there in the morning like i couldn't do any of that in 2021 when we did get married um and yeah just having obviously everyone there and being able to dance the night away and every, all of it we we just didn't we didn't want to miss out and we'd already booked everything so and paid for things <laughs> so um we just moved it everyone was really great about moving it obviously they're like what else were we going to do <laughs> in these unprecedented times um we just moved it to 2022 and that's the wedding i'm going to be talking about today right off the bat there were things that uh we knew we wanted I, in particular, knew exactly what I wanted. <laughs> um, I wanted a life-size unicorn at my wedding. That just was a must-have. <laughs> um, I just, I've wanted that forever, and I just, I, I had to have it. And um, that was one of the main things I wanted. And we knew we wanted lots of flowers. Like, we wanted the flowers to be big and bold and colourful and, like, big blousy blooms like not um small flowers like we wanted impact with our flowers um and we knew we wanted to get married in this particular church neither of us are particularly religious but we just the church that we got married in and we did a um wedding blessing in the year later at, at this at our wedding um was the church that i was christened in my parents got married there my grandparents got married there um like everything's happened there for my whole family like um and something really special in 2021 when we signed the register like the big the big book that's got it, it it's just i think it's so sentimental that it's got my parents names in there my grandparents names in there like all of that and then we're in there 
But also he told us on the day that we were the last ever people to sign that book because they're not doing it that way anymore. You don't actually sign a book anymore. It's going to be moved online and all this stuff, and which I think is really sad in a way. Um, so we're like a part of history because if anyone ever wants to go and look through that book for like their families, we're literally the last name, last people to ever get married there, which I just think is amazing and just how weird that that happened that way. And if we had moved our wedding completely and not done that small ceremony, it wouldn't have been that way. So yeah, um, anyway, <laughs> so we knew we wanted that church and I also wanted a bouncy castle, a wedding bouncy castle. Basically for about five years now, every birthday I've asked for a bouncy castle. I've been like, no, genuinely guys, I want a bouncy castle, please. And no one's got me one. So I was like, well, I'm having one at the wedding. And I read somewhere, and I can't remember where it was, that when you first, because I didn't know where to start with wedding planning, that when you first start wedding planning, you should sit down with your partner and both in secret write down the three things that are the most important to you in terms of what you spend your money on, um, like the must-haves above everything else. And um, we did that. We both went in separate rooms and wrote it down. And amazingly, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's just how long we've been together and how much we've talked about our wedding, but we had the exact same th three things. So we'd both actually written my dress. Um, I am a princess. I'm a girly girl. <laughs> I always have been. I've always dreamed of my wedding dress. And also just like, I love getting dressed up and I'm very dressed up in everyday life most of the time as well and I like being overdressed and um, I like the drama and I like being fabulous and I have a lot of pretty dresses so this dress had to be epic. I wanted it to be the most fabulous thing I'll ever wear, which it was. Um, and yeah, I've dreamed of it since I was a little kid. I am that girl and like Ben knows that as well. And so that was on there. The second thing we'd both put was flowers. Um, we just really felt like flowers make a wedding in a way. Like it just feels more wedding-y if there's lots of flowers rather than feeling like it's another event. Um, especially because of our like sort of unconventional venue but really in any venue to me if there's no flowers I think it feels less weddingy and I know I'm talking from a place of privilege because flowers are bloody expensive and it, like ridiculously so <laughs> um, and so I know that for a lot of people they don't matter and that's absolutely fine at all I'm not judging your wedding but for us for it to feel like our wedding we always both wanted a lot of flowers which also goes back to the fact that in our everyday life we always have flowers in nearly every room of our house. Uh, fresh flowers, dried flowers. <laughs> um, and we're big avid gardeners, like our gardens front and back are just full of flowers and we take care of them every single day. Like it's a big part of us. So yeah, that mattered. And the third thing we wrote was photography slash videography. Um, I'm a massive photo person. I take a million photos every day. And it's funny because whenever I said that in the wedding planning process and was talking about the costs of photographers and stuff because I was willing to spend a lot on that and I, I don't regret spending a penny on that either. Um, when I was talking about that, I kept having people be like, yeah, but you know, will you ever actually sit and go through them? And Ben kept jumping in and being like, yeah, she does. Like I make photo albums. I print all of our photos from like our trips together when we moved house, like everything. I'm making a full scrapbook of the whole like wedding planning process and then I'll have like wedding albums, obviously. Um, I actually do get them out and look through them. I love it and I cherish them. And that goes back to like, I, some of my favorite memories in childhood were looking through my parents' wedding photos, my grandparents' wedding photos. Like just, I don't know, just that little piece of like history and that really special moment in time captured in that way. So it was important to us, but also like, I knew I wanted a particular style and a particular feel and with a good photographer it won't just look like a couple standing there on their wedding day you will get the whole vibe and feel back um, of the wedding day when you look at them and that is exactly what we got with our photographer she's incredible her name is Shona Nolan and a lot of the stuff that I'll be putting up um, on the screen will be of hers she's amazing um, yeah, I don't regret that at all. When I looked through her stuff and her work with lighting and um, I don't know, I just, her her photos and her videos, just I could feel the vibe of the wedding and that's what I want because now 
when we look at them, it immediately transports you back to that day. And that is so lovely. And I've actually just got loads of huge, huge ones <laughs> printed. Nine of them, gigantic. They're going to be in here in our dining room on a whole wall, taking up a whole wall. I don't care. Like they're the most fabulous thing in the world. And I want to look at them every day. Um, but yeah, we agreed on all those three things. Like, um, like Ben said, you know, you forget a lot of the day. The photographers and videographers captured moments that we weren't there for as well, which is really beautiful. Like people's reactions to things and people just having fun. And, you know, when you're off doing your portraits as a couple, you know, you miss all of that. And it's really, really special to have that. And um, yeah, so I think top tip, write down like your three most important things of your partner if you're just starting wedding planning. So I always knew how I wanted my wedding day to run and um, again if you're new here or if maybe you just don't know this because it's not something I like necessarily talk about a lot these days um, but I come from a performance background my whole life I did acting, dancing, singing um, and then when I went to university I actually studied street arts uh, which is like street theatre and um, I loved it and I got I learned so much about like the way people experience art and performance and that really went into my ideas about my wedding like from the get-go as soon as I was there I was like learning things about how I wanted our wedding to be so basically this is what I wanted my wedding to be like on the day I wanted people to obviously come to the church um I wanted to walk into the bridal march I wanted the big I wanted the organ which we had um my dress is gigantic down the aisle, which we had big flowers everywhere, lovely, beautiful, um, tradi more traditional wedding ceremony. And then we go off in our little car. And when you get to the venue, I wanted it outdoors. I wanted an outdoor wedding. I'm an outdoor person. Um, so, and me and Ben love doing stuff outdoors together and just nature. And particularly, I love the woods, like woodlands. I love, I love trees. I love flowers. I love being in nature I just do and I love woodlands I just think I don't know I know some of you might think I sound very weird if you're watching this and you're not this way but like I think there's something very magical about being in a woodlands I don't know I just when I'm there and the wind through the trees and the light through the trees and I just think it's all very magical and um gives me the warm fuzzy feels so I wanted a woodland wedding finding a woodland venue was incredibly difficult um and I had a few people just ghost me or a few people claim they're a woodland wedding venue and then you get there and you're like where's the woodlands <laughs> um, and our venue was a, a sort of a compromise in the end really and um I'm not going to get into it in this video because I want to keep this positive but um my god we had nothing but issues with the person that runs our venue in the like two week no two months in the like two months that led up to our wedding and on our wedding day and after um just an absolute nightmare so i'm not even going to talk about the venue or recommend them please i just don't you do not want to go through what we went through um anyway the venue itself is beautiful but the people that run it are incompetent <laughs> So yeah, I'm not going to be shouting them out at all. So what I wanted for the day was that when people arrive to the venue, they've got to sort of go exploring a bit. Like I wanted that whimsy that like children feel when they go somewhere new, like all the like, oh my God, oh my God, like looking around things everywhere that catch your attention. Little things that are sort of hidden away that some people might not even know is there. And then you hear from someone else and you want to go back. And that all comes from my performance background and, and from my course at uni, definitely. Um, I did a lot of work at university that was like that, where I did like walkthroughs or um, walkabout acts and you learn about the ways people like to experience a space, the ways people move through, through a space, the way you can ignite that sense of play in adults and that creates real magic and that's what I wanted for our wedding. So I, I really wanted people to arrive and there'd be just like little signs that say like Jessica and Ben's wedding this way and also that like our bridal party could like help with that like if people are going to get lost <laughs> um to direct them the right way but sort of yeah this like exploring through the woods and i knew that i wanted like fairy lights everywhere um and like little flowers hung from the trees so just add that like splash, splash of color and playfulness that's very us as a couple um but i also wanted to do 
um, something where I had, a, I had a sign and you got there and it said walk our story. And I wanted to do that just because we've been together so long and we've been through so much and I really wanted to honour that on our big day, like that look how far we've come and and for us as well. And it really was incredibly moving on the day for us to like, even though we, we, we designed it, we'd set it up like it was all us, but like actually living through it the way I wanted our guests to. I don't think I, I expected it to hit me as much as it did. It was very emotional. Um, so yeah, it said walk our story and you're going through the woods and then photos were hung from the trees and there was a photo for every year that we've been together. So our, literally our first photo together that we took in a photo booth was the first photo when we were 14. All the way up to, and all the big moments, like the day we bought our first house, um, the day we got engaged, like literally Ben proposing was there. Um, and as you're like sort of halfway through, I wanted little like chill out areas um, that were very beautiful and could also act as photo spots for people. But also because like I want, uh, if I needed to sit down, if any of my guests needed to sit down, you know, my nan unfortunately was too unwell to come to the main wedding. She did come to our wedding the year before when we got married though, so that was amazing. Um, but I was thinking of her. I was thinking, yeah, if she gets that far, she might not. She might want to sit down because also like I am disabled. I am chronically ill. I had to. I wanted to be considerate of that and like people with babies I just thought it's nice to have pe places for people to sit that are a bit more quiet but still look beautiful and also for people to sit and pose photos and chill out and just be with like their little group on the day so I did that and I also wanted like I I have loved at weddings before when they've honored people that they've lost like people that have passed away but the sad and morbid truth is I have lost so many people and we have lost so many people between the two of us that I was just like, it's just going to be like a graveyard. Like if I have like a photo of everyone, it will just, I'll need like a whole head table just for that. And that just seems very morbid. So my way of working around that was I put together photos of people that we'd lost, but like happy moments of like my grandparents holding me when I was a baby and I intertwined that with like everyone's wedding photos so like my parents wedding photo was there aunties and uncles grandparents their wedding photos were all there baby photos of me and my brothers together baby photos of Ben and his mum like our our dogs like every everything was all in one space and like flowers all in it and, and fairy lights and even photos of our of us with our friendship group like when we were a lot younger because we've all been friends for a really long time um you know I wanted all that in there so it wasn't just like a graveyard <laughs> and it was still honoring them but in a very happy and like romantic way um and I'm really glad I did that and honestly some of the photos of the guests like experiencing the walkthrough are my favorites because you can see all their faces are lit up and you can see people pointing like oh my god what's that over there and like oh did you see that and same as when they're at that bit with the photos of all the family you can see people be, are emotional you can see people are laughing like it just was very sentimental which I'm a very sentimental person if you didn't already guess I'm hopeless romantic and I romanticize everything and I um so I love that and that's they're some of my favorite moments that um shown a court because yeah I didn't get to see them but I got to see afterwards that it had the desired effect what we wanted people to feel and experience they were and that's just amazing so then I wanted, what my dream always was, was even before we found the venue, I knew this is exactly what I wanted. So you'd done the walkthrough, the last photo would be like Ben proposing and then our wedding photo from last year. And then you come up and there's a giant flower arch and you walk through that and then you're in a clearing in the woods where we'll have a marquee or something so that it's because of it's English and weather, you know, we have to be prepared. <laughs> um, and... So that's what we had. We had a gigantic flower arch. It was absolutely beautiful. Our florists were early hour studio. Impeccable. They're amazing. Would a million percent recommend. And again, I don't regret spending my money on them at all. Um, you go through the flower arch and also because then when the photographers are the other side, all the photos of everyone coming in and seeing the whole thing and their faces are lighting up is also beautiful because they're under the flower arch. And I see, I've, I thought through every detail. <laughs> I'm that girl. I, I did. I thought through every single angle and detail and about how our guests would experience everything as well as us. And like, um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm really glad I did that because those, again, they're some of the loveliest photos. And as you came through the arch, I wanted you to be greeted by um, people with champagne and canapes and so that you've got that little bit to tide you over. Um, but I also wanted a little ice cream van to be there. Again, just something that's fun, nostalgic, whimsical, playful, very us. Um, so that you can have something sweet, something savoury and your little drink to tide you over. Because I just know that people get hungry at weddings. And like, I know that people don't eat before they go there. And then you've got to wait for the food. And you're just sort of, there is some time where you're standing around, even if you've planned stuff for your guests. And I just, I wanted to make that as nice as possible. Um, the unicorn will be bam right there. You come, you come up into the clearing, bam, life-size unicorn, which is what we did. And again, people's reactions of seeing that and experiencing that are wonderful. And then you'd be in the clearing and there'd be, again, some little sit-down areas that look really cute and, and pretty and but so that people can go and sit and chill. And then also I wanted, if we were going to have a structure for people, because, you know, you have to, like I said, English weather is so unpredictable. Even in summer, you know, I could chuck down all day. So, um, and we were having a spring wedding and we were lucky, not a spot of rain on either wedding day. So yeah, beautiful. Um, but I wanted a fully clear marquee, like, because I wanted it to still feel like you were outside. Um, I didn't want, you know, I wanted a fully outside wedding, but I know we don't have the weather for that. So I was like, well, I'll protect people, but I want it to still feel like you're outside as much as possible. And also that you could have the sides up so that it was just like open in the day and um, you know, the sky's just clear and lovely, but then at night you can put the sides down to keep everyone warm, but it's still see-through and you can see the stars. And I wanted fairy lights so it looked like stars. Um, on the roof and I knew I wanted tall big huge <laughs> over the top centerpieces and I wanted the bouncy castle to be there for everyone to have fun which was a great hit with people especially people that bought kids and it was really funny because everyone that has kids thanked me for thinking of the kids it wasn't for the kids <laughs> it was for us <laughs> but um it's just a bonus that the kids loved it um we did have a lot of kids coming so it was really nice and it was it was great and some of the photos of them enjoying it are just precious so again another thing i'm so glad we did um for our food we knew we wanted we didn't want pretentious little tiny fancy food we just didn't even though it was a formal wedding i was in a big ball gown he was in tops and tails we wanted burgers and pizza <laughs> So that is what we had. We had cocktails, burgers, we had like halloumi skewers, we had um, hot dogs and chips, we had a pizza oven in the evening. Um, yeah, we just knew we wanted the food to be more casual but the, the event to be formal and a lot of people kept trying to dissuade me from that like well, people will be like, won't people feel like this? Won't people say this? Shouldn't you do this? And I just think, no, <laughs> there's no rules. It's our wedding and we're going to do what we want. And I like the juxtaposition of like me in a giant ball gown eating a burger. That's very me. <laughs> if you know me, that's very me. So that's what we wanted and that's what we did. And I'm, I don't regret it again. And, and so many people told us it was the best food they'd had at a wedding and that they loved it. That's what we picked for the food. So that was great. Um, with our cake, I knew I wanted three tiers and I knew I wanted it to be mainly white, but then pastel florals, very floral, um, and to like tie in with our wedding flowers. Um, yeah, and then just party the night away. Just a great DJ, good vibes. And I knew I wanted a photo booth and I actually got one that was um, like a party booth. <laughs> had a wind machine you could make videos for us which are very funny um it came with props and everything and you got them as like two strips and one strip you could take home and the other strip you'd stuck in our guest book and sign it and i and again i love that so glad we did it it was so much fun so that's sort of how i wanted it to to, to be and it was like i i ended up making that happen and um yeah, I sort of at the beginning, we had a lot of struggles finding the venue, like I said, um, and a lot of places that were sentimental to us, I reached out to and, and asked if I could rent it for the day for my wedding. Um, but a lot of them are protected lands for either wildlife or the plants and stuff, so they just can't, and I totally respect that, so that's fine. So our venue is actually like on a big open space that they've got where there's a few buildings that do a lot of other things, and I actually liked this about it, that, that the, the buildings do a lot of work for mental health charities and for like wellness, and I love that. 
and like the first bit that we sent people walking through is like a gardens and allotments that again people can go there that have mental health issues and spend the day there planting there being outside getting fresh air all, all of that good stuff and i i love that i'm all for that so um but then at the back so then they had this woodlands and in there they had like a place where you could have a little ceremony but we would our wedding was too big for that and i didn't want that anyway because of the church but they then had the, the big clearing and a lot of people just would go through the building and and either have stuff in the building and in the field out the back or just the field out the back but i sent people the long way <laughs> through the woods so that i could have what i want and it was like a compromise in that sense but i genuinely couldn't find exactly what i wanted anywhere so um it was it, it's it was lovely and i it's fine i can't exactly say i don't regret the uh venue because of what she put us through but um the actual space itself i don't regret for our big day when we were discussing color schemes we were finding it really hard we knew we wanted lots of white because we really wanted it to feel very wedding and bridal um and just that it's like crisp and clean and looks beautiful against like the woods the contrast of the trees and the white yeah we knew that but we kept going backwards and forwards about colors and um I didn't really want a colour scheme. I didn't want to say like pink or pink and blue. I sort of said I want pastels. Um, I think pastels suit me the most and look nice next to me in photos, which I did I did consider. Um, and they're the colours that bring me the most joy. And also Ben loves, loves pastels. And like, if you didn't know, it was all his idea that we had that pastel rainbow kitchen in our last house so just just so you know but yeah clearly we're a pastel rainbow couple and um so that was sort of our color scheme it and it wasn't set like it wasn't everything has to be a pastel rainbow um so for instance like our flowers i literally just said i love baby blue baby pink pale yellow like a little peach color moment um white mint green or pale green um lilac you know i just said i love all the pastel colors do what you want and i everyone sort of was very good at trying to tie in with each other but i wasn't really that fussed if they did or they didn't um like we had some bunting but i just picked white it wasn't pastel rainbow um the when it came to my bridesmaids and bridesman um so what I did was I first of all started with my maid of honor who's my best friend we've been best friends since we were four and I picked a load of pastel dresses I didn't pick a color for her I just picked a load of pastel dresses and we went around hers and it was actually still during the pandemic when you could be outside of each other but you couldn't be in each other's house or something so I had to stand out on the on the road <laughs> she was trying them on and then opened her front door and I was like yeah no um, yeah uh, it was funny but <laughs> it's just you know it is what it is something to tell the grandkids um but yeah she she was trying them on and I was leaning more and more and more towards lilac on her and I actually me and Ben when we discussed it I just said a lot of people have pink and then like my mum had blue as her bridesmaids uh colour and lilac felt like the in-between colour and I just said well let's see with Robin's dress that's sort of what I'll go off of basically and yeah, like the, we fell in love with this lilac dress. She loved it. I loved it. It was perfect. So, and, but I wanted the colours as well of the of their outfits to be not exact colours. And I not I can't explain it better than that. But like, say, I don't know. Say like that's clearly pink, right? And that's clearly yellow. I didn't want that. I wanted more of an in betweeny. All sort of what is that colour? Colour. I don't know if that makes any sense. So her dress was lilac, but it was a very unusual lilac and I liked it a lot. And I knew I wanted sort of full length and tall and a bit of sparkle, a bit of fabulosity because my dress was huge and very sparkly and it had feathers and everything, <laughs> everything in the kitchen sink. And I wanted them to be just as fabulous. Um, my bridesman then wore pink um, and that sort of happened because when we were discussing colours for him, he I think he only told me no yellow. <laughs> he was just like, I just don't know, yeah, yellow, yellow. And I was like, fair enough. Um, and we were just looking again. We were just looking at um, pastel suits for him and just trying to find one that we both liked that was a pastel colour, um, but not lilac because I wanted them to all be different. And um, we found this pink one. And again, it was like an off 
peachy pink and I loved that because again it wasn't like an exact colour and it looked lovely next to Robin's, my maid of honour. And then my bridesmaid, Abby, was in a beautiful blue. And again, it was like this periwinkle, powdery, like not clear baby blue, baby blue. Um, and they all looked glorious together. And again, with Abby's dress and Robin's dress, I didn't want them to be the same, but I wanted the same vibe. So we both we went with both full length, both tall skirts and then some sparkle up top. But they had completely different necklines, completely different sleeves, all that jazz. And with their hair, I knew I wanted their hair to be up and I wanted like a feathery hair accessory to tie into my dress with a bit of sparkle again. Um, we're very extra, but there's no such thing as too much with me. And yeah, but I wanted them to be slightly different and they were, so um, my maid of honor's hair had like a plait through it into like a sort of, um, twist and then um abby's was just sort of more no plaits and went into like a sort of a twisted bun situation they both had some little bits down at the front which made them sort of the same but not the same um which i really loved and the photos of like one of the photos of us together is like up there top three photos of the weddings and i'll include that so you can see it i think it's fabulous the colors together just work um beautiful and so from that we we that that decided our ties for the guys so um we knew that ben was going to be in ivory um so black he was in tops and tails they all were top hats and tailcoats so black trousers black jacket black hats and then ben was going to be in all ivory so just ivory and white because it looked fucking stunning next to my dress it just it worked um and my dad would be in ivory with a black tie and then the guys, we put the best man in lilac to match my maid of honour. And then we put the guys all in pastel rainbow colours. So we had lilac, baby blue, baby pink, a pale like baby yellow and like a lovely mint green. And they were all very pale. And um, yeah, again, it just looked, it looked great all together. Um, so we sort of did have a colour scheme, but didn't have a colour scheme, if that makes sense. We didn't like make decisions based on that. Um, and same with our cake so that's a lovely story so um when i found our cake lady i knew i wanted it to be her i'd been pinning cakes by her not knowing they were made by her on pinterest for years on my wedding boards and then one of them it actually had her like name on under it like someone had actually written who the cake was by so i finally found who it was and so then i went searching for their website um and our cake was done by emma page cakes highly recommend the most beautiful cake i've ever eaten in my life which i know it matters how it looks but it also matters how it tastes and all of our guests said it was the best wedding cake they've ever had um and just so beautifully done and so professional um to be honest every single person that we hired other than the venue um were the most joyous professional great people to work with so yeah i will make sure i like give their names and i'll follow me on instagram because i've been posting that and tagging everyone um but yeah uh so we had a really lovely long chat when i first like asked to meet with her we couldn't meet because of covid so we were on the phone and um we ended up talking for like three hours about my garden <laughs> and um because of that she then said well send me photos of your garden like send me photos of your favorite stuff in your garden and i did and she put those flowers on my cake it was just incredible um and and tied in with the colors of the florist like she asked me to send photos from the florist proposal and they liaised with it and yeah together it just looked i mean just beautiful in fact one of the photos we're putting on this wall that's giant is literally just of the cake <laughs> because it's that stunning and also just because of having so many and having been so big it's such a beautiful like simple photo in amongst all the other crazy ones to put on the wall but it uh, that's how much i love it and the fact that it was like to do with our garden and our, our daily life together i really loved um those like personal touches really mattered to me and really the vibe for our wedding we just wanted it to be whimsical i kept saying whimsical opulence <laughs> So I wanted lots of whimsy and intrigue and discovering things and playfulness and magic um, and romance. Um, but also I think that when you plan an outdoor wedding of any kind, but especially if you're like in the woods or if you want a tent or a marquee, everyone straight away leans to rustic, have everything be rustic or have everything be like very 
cutesy, kitschy, homemade, um, like little trinkets and everything very, yeah, like home, home done. And I think both of those aesthetics are beautiful and they work for many, many people, but it's just not us. And I wanted it to still be like a formal, fancy wedding. I said like, when will I ever go to like an event like this? That's what I want my wedding to feel like. When will I get to do this again? Um, and I, again, I like the juxtaposition of having it be very formal and fancy in the woods, like I, I, and with burgers. I just loved that. That's the very us. Um, so yeah, I didn't want it to feel formal. I wanted it to look formal, if that makes sense. I wanted it to be very fun. And actually every single person at the end of the night told us how much fun they'd had. And we got so many messages afterwards telling, them, telling us how much fun they had. It's the best wedding they've ever been to. Just like the highest compliments for me. They all made me cry after the wedding. <laughs> Getting all those lovely messages made me cry. So if you sent me one, you made me cry. Um, but truthfully, like hearing that people had fun and that, that like we'd actually got across to people what we'd really wanted for our day. Oh, it was amazing. Such a lovely feeling. It also just gave me such pride. Like I really did. And this is not me like just saying this. Ben even said in his wedding speech, he did everything here today is not me <laughs> he was like you know I, it's us and it's what we wanted but it would not have been possible without Jess and the hard work she put in and I, I did I planned it all on my own up until two months before when I hired um a wedding planner who's incredible her name's Rihanna from the planning suite um and I've known her for many many years with with friends and I knew that she did that and I it just got to a certain point where suddenly like I was getting about 50 emails a day from because it was a dry hire venue and so many vendors everyone had questions for me and with my health being what it is I just couldn't do it anymore I would have been ran into the ground and I wouldn't have been able to enjoy the day as much and so I reached out to her and we hired her and she helped us from that point up until the day and on the day um and yeah, but other than that, I did everything on my own. And uh, so seeing it all come together and hearing that people enjoyed it gives me such a sense of pride that I might even cry now. <laughs> I'm an emotional wreck. No, but it's so, it means everything to me. And um, yeah, so yeah, I just, it gives me such a sense of pride. I can't, I kept saying, I can't believe we've done this. I can't believe we've pulled it off. I can't believe I made this happen. Um, look at me beaming. <laughs> One of the best ways to find vendors, by the way, if you're doing it like I'm doing, or even if you're not and you just need a couple of different vendors, um, I found Googling just basically impossible and pointless. <laughs> but what I did do is I got a subscription to Rock and Roll Bride magazine. I really want to send out photos into them. I might still do that. Um, and I was going through that because that was very, because like, we were doing stuff differently. You know, I wanted a life-size unicorn and a bouncy castle at our wedding. <laughs> Um, um, I just thought that'll be the place where I'll be able to find it because there'll be photo shoots from people from real weddings in there and then it'll have all, everyone's details and what I did was like oh I like that oh I like those flowers Ru I wrote down all the names of the people that I liked on, on one of my like bridal notepads and then then I googled them specifically and compared them and then I'd whittle it down to say three of each vendor so like I reached out to like three photographers three florists etc and then went from there with picking. Um, another great way is wedding fairs. I went to one wedding fair very early on, like literally the month after we got engaged. Um, and I just took pictures of everything I liked and everyone's names, took people's cards. And then again, when it came to moving everything and I went back to that and I found a couple of people through that. So that's another great way. When it came to our flowers, because I've talked about our flowers a lot and how important they were. Um, I knew I wanted peonies, they're my absolute favourite um, and also I just think they're such a sign of spring and like yeah I just knew that I wanted that and um, I think roses are very romantic so I was happy to have lots of roses and I wanted hydrangeas because they're just big and like bold and powerful, they have a lot of impact hydrangeas and also because they're one of our favourite things to grow we have one, two, one, two, three, four, five six seven seven hydrangeas in our garden i'm trying to count them like there's a few out the front um of all different colors and we adore them and so that was another one i wanted in there um i really love delphiniums um gorgeous yeah and also another way i tied in flowers was i actually handmade um the 
favours for everyone myself. So what I did was I bought a load of dried flowers and um, actually this started with our invitations. So I, we had flowers on our save the date. We had like cherry blossom on them. And then when it came to our invitations, I, what I did was we had the invitation set and they had cherry blossom on them to tie into the save the date. And then I put vellum paper over them and then tied them with like a little bit of um, string that had like a glitter thread through it, like a rose gold glitter thread. We had a stamp on that wax stamp that was um, pink and had a tulip on it because that's Ben's favourite flower. And then what I did was I put in the stamp like little stems of dried flowers in like all pastel colours and some like little green bits as well. Um, and then put them in a box, pastel tissue paper, and sent those out. Um, again, I wanted it to be a real experience and like personal, and I literally picked everybody, every single person's flowers myself, like what I thought they would like, uh, colors I thought they would like, textures I thought they would like. I really did think of every, every of everyone in that way. And so then when it came to the day, I wanted the favours to sort of tie back into that. So I made tiny bouquets of dried flowers for everyone. I bought like a load of dried flowers online in all the pastel rainbow colours. And then I laid them all out in their types, like each flower. So I had like loads of lavender sprigs, etc, etc. And then I just picked for each person and I put some little round, um, I did try, I was thinking of doing it with pastel tissue paper, but in the end I went with brown, like just brown paper, because I thought that tied into the woodlands in, like that was the most rustic I was gonna go. <laughs> but it tied into the woodlands theme in the marquee. So I did brown paper, but then I put little pastel ribbons around it to tie it up. And they were on everyone's plates and I, painstakingly made all of those by hand and for each person and took pictures of each one so I could remember whose was whose and then I also on the day before the wedding went there myself and I, I put them out on each at each person's table and then I also coordinated so that everybody had pastel napkins and I tied them um, and I wanted the napkin to not match the colour of the ribbon <laughs> <laughs> Again, I just didn't want anything to be matchy-matchy, basically. I wanted it to be a big pastel rainbow with lots of white. Um, and so that's what I did. And I went there and I literally had written down, this person has these flowers with a picture and then they have this napkin. And I did it all. Um, which, in hindsight, I should have brought someone on board with that process because then when we were there and everyone wanted to help me get it done quicker and I, I couldn't, uh, like, because it was just all in my head, I knew, yeah, it was a lot. I should have involved someone in that process. But... I'm really glad and again people really loved them and there was only a couple left behind which was really nice that people actually did take them and then my friends have sent me pictures of like ways they've used them and like having them in little jars in their house and that's just uh, it's just so touching and I love it um so stationery um I made the invitations all myself like I did them online and I I, I made them all myself on the day stationery there was only one person for me her name's Victoria and her brand is called you me we and yeah, I had been looking and looking and looking forever for stationery that I liked, like name places that I liked, because people do all sorts of different things with the name places and the table numbers and really creative stuff. And I, 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 I was overloaded, but I didn't love any of them. And then one day I saw this place, place name on Pinterest that was pastel confetti inside it, like a shaker. And I was like, that's it. That's the one I have to have it. And I literally had to search that down for about six months. I was Googling everything I could think of to have it come up. I, I just honestly couldn't find it. And then I found it, I think, on, on Instagram through Rock and Roll Bride again, maybe. I think they shared it and they tagged her. And I was like, oh, hallelujah, it was meant to be. Reached out to her and she did out on the day stationery. And it was all like custom. Um, I like picked the colours and how I wanted things. And actually before, when I first booked her, she didn't offer that confetti set as a set because she does a lot of sets that you can pick from so you could just pick the design and then put your details on but the confetti one wasn't it and she was like oh I've been waiting for a bride to want that because she only actually did it and the photo I found was just from a photo shoot for a magazine she was like it's not actually ever been used for a real bride and I was like I want it <laughs> I love it even more if it's never been used. 
Um, and now she does it as a set, so that's amazing. Um, but yeah, I, so we had name paces by her, confetti, pastel, beautiful. She made the table numbers and, and holographic and pastels, and I made the little holders for them and painted them all myself, um, different pastel colours. Um, we had a hanging table plan that again was all filled with confetti, incredible, it was amazing. Um, yeah, the stationery was a joy and it really tied everything in together beautifully. The menus were like a pastel ombre, just stunning. Um, and people kept them even, and I was like, this is just, yes, this is what I wanted. People are enjoying it. And we didn't really have a theme for our wedding. I know a lot of a lot of weddings have themes. Ours was just whimsical, opulent, fairy tale, romantic vibes, playfulness, colourfulness. Um, just us was the theme, really. Just what we wanted. We were the theme. <laughs> for decor, I didn't really want a lot of extra decor, actually. I I've got a weird colour, I think. Is it changing? It's getting a bit better now, I don't know. Um, for decor, yeah, I wanted the flowers to be a focal point and I wanted it to be actually very clean and like white in the marquee. Um, but I did have a couple things. So through the woods, what I wanted to do and what I did do was um, in little jars hanging from all the trees and also with the like photo area, I had little jars with water in, hung with the little glittery string that tied back to the invitations. And in them, I had freshly cut flowers from our garden. Um, so I literally went round the day before and cut lots of flowers from our garden. Not all of them, because I have too many flowers. <laughs> so I was left with lots, don't worry. Uh, but I cut a lot of the flowers um, that you'll see in these clips because yeah, I just, I, again, I wanted to tie back to like something we do that we love. And I think with a, with gardening, it's like, I love the quote that to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. I think that's the quote. Um, it is something that like, I don't know, brings me and Ben closer. It's nice to have something that we like, nurture and take care of together and that we really enjoy doing that. And the pride you get from when it looks amazing and when stuff starts blooming, the excitement, just all of that sort of like sums up our life together really. And so I wanted to, have that in there and, and it gave me great joy to tell everyone that on the day oh those little flowers they were all like oh they're really cute I was like yeah they're from our garden oh my god what it was lovely um and then in the marquee we didn't really have any extra decor we had fairy lights on the roof uh which led to some stunning photos of us dancing in the evening we had obviously the flowers and that was about it we had some little candles on each table um, and all the sta stationery, and that was literally about it. I didn't really want much else. And same as the walkthrough, really. There's fairy lights, the photos, and just flowers. Um, because as well, I think if you're not going for a, one colour, like we were, it could be quite hectic if I then added in lots of stuff, um, which I actually do love. I'm a maximalist, and <laughs> I think it looks incredible in a lot of weddings. But I don't know. For us, it's just we wanted to not have so much other decor or decorations. Um, with the chill out area in the um, forest, that led to like so many beautiful fo photos. Although I'm annoyed because I didn't get many photos there. <laughs> um, I have only a couple of regrets from the wedding and that's one of them, but I'm gonna make a video actually on regrets I have of the wedding and then stuff that I would do again. Um, if you wanna see that, let me know. But yeah, it was the most beautiful day. Um, I couldn't have asked for it to be any more perfect it, and the photos and the videos are just breathtaking and yeah I'm just so proud of, of, of it and what we created and, and how it came together and how much people enjoyed it and the memories we made will last forever and yeah this was our, our wedding in all its glory <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video uh, please do give it a like if you did just because that really helps my channel out and obviously like where I've been so unwell this whole year so far sadly um, I've not been consistently uploading and it's it's really obviously affecting my channel so every little bit helps um, and if you do subscribe I'd love to have you I do lots of fashion content I've got some more wedding ideas coming up um, I do talk about chronic illness and life with my chronic illness and disability um, I've got a lupus update coming real soon if you do follow me for that uh, because the anniversary of that is coming up as well um, yeah, I do lots of different stuff, weekly vlogs that are very cosy and chill. <laughs> um, I would just love to have you. Um, but that's all. I'm going to go and I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are and I will see you in the next video. Bye!